this is Kyle Martin Paintings. All right, welcome back to my plein air painting channel. Today's video, we're going to be creating a outdoor still life. And right now I'm taking a moment to get my still life set up. In April, when it was starting to get nice outside, Corbin and I were enjoying going to a Amish greenhouse. And at the Amish greenhouse, there was these beautiful begonias. And of course, I had to grab the begonias because I knew that if I had some nice red orange scarlet flowers that they would make their way into one of my still life paintings i also grabbed a geranium plant and the begonias have proved to be much easier to take care of than the geraniums because i just noticed that even though i've been watering the geraniums every day they're past their prime and they're kind of wilting so i have my begonias extremely beautiful i think i'm going to paint right in this sort of area and i think that i'm going to stand right here just because i can be in the shade for a little bit this morning if i stand right here something's crawling in the garden right behind me and i don't want it to be a snake or something like that the other item that i want to feature in today's still life is a chrome tea kettle that i had in my peony still life video a couple weeks ago and i liked that peony in the still life so much that i thought that it could use its own kind of lead role and i thought that there's a possibility that i could All right, I got my mic back on. As I was starting to set things up, the chrome tea kettle, it wasn't working out. So the white pitcher beat out the chrome tea kettle in this situation. I just want to say that that white pitcher is probably the most used and one of my favorite still life pieces that I have right now. The reason that I decided to use that is look at how much taller that white pitcher is compared to the tea kettle. So that's one reason that I wanted to use the white pitcher instead of the tea kettle. The other reason, just look how beautifully the light is bouncing off of the, the vermilion red begonias and being reflected into the shadow side of that white pitcher. It's just really a beautiful effect and I even heighten that effect a little bit by placing that green fruit jar to the left of the pitcher. So I have red reflecting from one side and I have green reflecting from the other side. You know, there's a nice contrast there. I went into the house, the baby is laying down for a nap, but I grabbed a couple of lemons that we got from Woodman's on Friday. And I got those lemons for this still life specifically. 9.30 now, and I'm always trying to be set up for these still life paintings at about 9.30, so it's time for me to get started with mixing some colors and start working on the canvas. I still have a couple more things to set up, so I'll get right back to it. Who's trying to sell you something? Something that you already have. But if you're too drunk to drive, and the music is right. Okay, I have my light pattern kind of set on the canvas at this point. It's a lot of drawing. And now it's time that I mix the initial statement of the colors that I'm seeing up there. So I'm just gonna go through and I'm gonna start to decide on what is the lightest thing that I see. And there's some very bright light information happening on the pitcher. So I'm using my color isolator here. I'm mixing on the palette. For this initial statement, I'm not going to feel the need to hit my colors 100%. I'm going to work on this painting over a series of days, a couple days at least, and I want to save a little bit of the fun of color for the second day. I want to get myself in the neighborhood today. I don't really feel the need to where I have to nail things down specifically just because I'm going to be coming back and working on this painting again. 
I want to set myself up for the colors that I'm going to be using, but I don't need to 100% nail it down. And that's kind of a fun way to work because today I get to have all the fun. You know, the first day of painting is always a day of fumbling around. There's a lot of drawing that needed to happen. There's a lot of thought of value that needs to happen today. There's a lot of, you know, just getting the still life set up. There's plenty to do on the first day that if I can nail my values on the first day, then tomorrow I can come back and I can have a wonderful display of color by cutting it into more than one session. I can kind of compartmentalize what I'm doing and usually that's the way that I prefer to work. She might let you stay, but just for the This is how far I got on the painting today. You can see the light has changed quite a bit in the last two hours since I started working. Whenever I paint something like this, it's always a rush and it's a chase to get something started on the canvas. I think I have a great initial statement here that I'm gonna easily be able to work a lot more color and light into over the coming painting sessions. Kind of cool. I don't feel like I need to finish a painting like this in one session. To me, it's more important to have a studio full of paintings that are well thought out and well put together. And if I was rushing to get this done in one session, the drawing might suffer. If the drawing suffers, the values might fall apart. If the values fall apart, I can guarantee you the color is going to be bad. While I don't think any one of those areas is perfect at this point, I think I'm setting myself up for the opportunity to make something that I'm happy with. Something where we can all experience that sparkling summer light. So with that, I'm going to pack my things up and we'll come back out and finish this painting up at a later date. I've got my buddy. Yesterday, we had weather that was not uh, appropriate for painting. Last year, the month of June was sunny and there was beautiful weather every single day. But this year, we've had quite a stark difference. My still life is still set up from a couple days ago. But this year, the weather has been very stormy and very moody the whole time. The year you were born, it was very nice out. And this year, Boy, have we had storms. We even had to go down in the or down into the cellar to get away from the bad storms the other night. So I'm going to take a moment to get myself my things set up and then I'm going to give my buddy back to her mom and they can take a nap while I create my painting. You can even see off in the distance those clouds were just obstructing the sun a moment ago but now they've for the most part they've passed during the summertime i try to work primarily on paintings that take me more than one session so i'm not always working a la prima and because it's summer it's the busiest time of year here's the painting right here this weekend we have a party at my aunt marcy and my uncle jim's house out at the lake so that's gonna be wonderful my sister will be here all the family will come and celebrate summer and tomorrow it's supposed to be cloudy the day after we're supposed to have thunderstorms it's like you get these little windows of time to complete your work and 
during those windows, you gotta, you have to make it happen. Last night I was painting till nine o'clock at night. Now it's before nine in the morning and we're getting back to it. And here's the painting I worked on last night until nine o'clock. But that's how it is. It's a joyful time of year. It's full production time. But that's how it is when it's full production time. All year long in Wisconsin, we wait for the summertime because it's cold and snowy for six months out of the year. Then we get a month or two of transition. Then we finally get our three months of summer. And towards the end of summer, my allergies start acting up. And so I only have these two or three months of full summer to be in full production. And so I have to take advantage of it during that time. I'll paint in the studio all winter, but these summer sessions are where it's at for me as far as the most joyful time of year. And I, <laughs> I'm a little tangled up here trying to set my easel up with my helper. You know, someday this girl is gonna be old enough to where she can go out and set the easel up and get the still life ready for her dad. And then he and her can go out and do it together. And right now we're just getting ready for that time such a joy to be able to have her along whoa tipping my canvas over such a joy to have this girl along to help me get set up in the mornings and to wake me up in the morning and to let me know that the sun is out such a joyful thing to have as i talk about we're in the full production of summer it sounds like it could be a lot or it could be there have been years in the past where it's been a lot to juggle in my mind and on the palette but now that i have a daughter it just everything just seems joyful like the minute i get away from the canvas i can just play with her and forget all the troubles of mixing paint and I can forget all about the hard work that I'm doing and I can just, yeah, I know. Anyway, she makes everything better. So I'm going to go ahead and finish setting up and we'll get this painting going. All right. I think I'm done uh, mumbling. <laughs> Thank you for bearing with me while I had that little vlog moment. I just broke this tripod. This little clip here is broken so it won't stay extended. I've bought this tripod a few times before. And this time around, I paid for the extra warranty from Amazon. So I actually have uh, the same tripod coming in the mail. And I should receive that tomorrow. So I'm learning that all of my equipment that I use, it just, it breaks down after a little while. I had that tripod for seven months and it finally, that plastic clip broke. As with everything these days, it's just all, nothing is really made all that well. So we're getting clamped down. You can see where the painting is at. I've got some work to do, but I'm about 15 or 20 minutes earlier being out here today. There's a lot of information in the flowers. And the reason that I wanted to come out early is so that I could work on some of that information that's in the flowers. And we have quite the breeze this morning. So fingers crossed that my umbrella will stay up. It's going to be impossible for me to work if I can't have this umbrella up because it's hot out. I mean, it's, I'm sure it's going to be 90 degrees again today. It's been 90 degrees every day this week, but having the umbrella up just makes, makes my life better. All right, for better or for worse, I think we're ready to get going. So I'm going to switch the microphone off and I'm going to switch the camera into time lapse mode. I'm going to start in this area of the canvas and then hopefully by 10 o'clock I'll be working on the still life objects. The main idea here is that there's this beautiful flower sitting right next to the pitcher and the lemons. some strong wind blowing by and I just made a 
great decision to put my little shelter up. This is just a shelter that I got from the store and it only cost about $30, but this thing, compared to an umbrella, if I had my umbrella up right now, which is what I started out with, I would be blowing away and I would be holding the umbrella down right now. Because I have the shelter up, I can paint right through it. All right, back to it. Such a foolish reason, I'm afraid. I'd like want to kiss you.
taking some time just to make my final decisions on this painting. The things that I did that helped this painting work out was number one, getting myself into the shade and not having to deal with the conditions of the wind. What happens when there's too much wind is that you spend all of your time fighting against the wind rather than making decisions on your painting. And I haven't used this little shelter yet this year, so I'm excited to, that I just saw it sitting in the shed before I started painting because it really enabled me to get into the painting and it enabled me to be able to paint without having to fight against the wind. And, and this is a really fun painting to work on. Not only was the effect of light so brilliant and so beautiful, but I had these warm orange-red begonias to work from. And that color burst really added to my idea of painting. And that those warm red begonias really made it fun to paint. You can see this picture is just lit up with all this reflected light from the begonias bouncing into the picture. And then on the other side we have this green glass fruit jar that's bouncing into the other side of the picture. That was kind of the motif or the idea that I built the whole painting off of. You know, seeing that at its final or almost final state makes me think that I was successful in hanging on to that first idea. And I'm just kind of dancing back and forth with the painting right now. I'm just seeing what are the final things that I need to do. And, and once I'm done dancing back and forth, I'll take this into the studio and let it dry out. And now, um, so I'm gonna just turn the camera off, make my few final decisions, and we'll get a photo of this on the screen, and we'll get a photo of this on the screen, and we'll be back with more summertime painting. I'll probably be, I'm probably gonna be headed out tonight to work on a painting that I'm doing in the golden hour light. And, um, and thanks so much for sticking with me through this one. You can see all of the color and all of the reflected light and all of the summertime feeling that's in this painting. All right, we'll do this again soon. GoPro, stop recording. GoPro, stop recording.